I was 18 when it happened. I got blackout drunk with a friend in her university residence, and the next day I remembered nothing, but I just had this feeling. Later, I understood that I'd experienced a drug-facilitated sexual assault, and I wasn't alone. One in five sexual assault victims believe they were intentionally drugged by their attacker. The most commonly found unexpected drugs are marijuana and cocaine, and even more are assaulted after knowingly consuming alcohol or drugs. I felt so free and excited to be done school. I barely noticed he kept buying me drink after drink. I was just drinking so much that night. Plus, I was taking Tylenol because I had a cold, and that, combined with the alcohol, made me extra drowsy. I didn't protect my drink or organize the buddy system with my friends. Maybe that would have helped, maybe not. Like me, 86% of drug-facilitated sexual assault victims were assaulted after having knowingly consumed alcohol. This does not mean the assault is their fault. People who are drunk or high should never be taken advantage of. I never thought it could happen to me. I just thought we were going to carry on and party back at his place. A friend offered to drive me home, and he sexually assaulted me. Yes, I was accepting the drinks. But that didn't give him the right to sexually assault me. It's not just someone slipping a little white pill into your drink. It's not just roofies. I was sexually assaulted while getting high smoking pot. Afterwards, I was so convinced it'd be my stupid mistake. But I eventually realized having sex with someone who's drunk, whether they made themselves that way or not, is a drug-facilitated sexual assault. Whether or not someone takes steps to protect themselves, a survivor of sexual assault is never to blame. No matter the circumstances, no matter the drug involved, sexual assault is always a crime. It wasn't my fault. I never found out who had taken advantage of me, but most often, sexual assault is committed by someone whom the victim already knows. 79% of sexual assault survivors who believed they were drugged knew their attacker. Everybody can do something to help prevent drug-facilitated sexual assault. I wouldn't want this to happen to my sister or my brother. Keep an eye on friends who are drinking or who are mixing drugs and alcohol. I didn't even know her, but I didn't like the way he was touching her. If you hear a friend's joke about rape, tell them it's not cool. I was out dancing with a few friends, and this guy was just making a move on my friend. All I did was go ask if she was okay. The guy looked uncomfortable and just walked away. I don't know, it just made me feel weird, so I grabbed another girlfriend and we started dancing next to them and it was a good thing that I did that because as soon as we got close to them, she gave me this look and I knew that it was time for us to leave. My best friend was a huge support to me after I was sexually assaulted. After I was sexually assaulted, I was lucky to have friends and family who supported me. They didn't press for details, and they didn't tell me to get over it. When my friend told me that she had been sexually assaulted, I didn't know what to do or say. She went with me to the emergency room right away, even though it was 4 in the morning. But it hurts to hear so many others say that it was my fault or that I somehow deserved what happened. But it didn't really matter because what she needed was someone to listen and to not judge. What I'd most like others to take away from my experience is that there is support. If you think you've been drugged and sexually assaulted, or if, like me, you just feel that something is wrong after a night you can't remember, go to a sexual assault and domestic violence treatment center or your nearest emergency department as soon as possible. At a sexual assault and domestic violence treatment center, we provide emotional support, physical and forensic examinations, as well as drugs that can help prevent against pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections such as HIV. We also provide counseling and follow-up services for those who may have a sexually transmitted infection. I woke up after a night of partying and I was really confused. I vaguely remembered running into a friend and him bringing me home, but I couldn't really remember exactly what happened. And when I woke up, I just felt like something was wrong. It's important to remember that if you would like evidence to be collected or if you'd like to be tested for the presence of drugs, that you do not eat or drink, uh, change your clothes, wash up, um, or use the bathroom prior to coming to our treatment center. When I went for my follow-up visit, I felt really relieved to know that I wasn't pregnant and I felt like everything was going to be okay. When I went to the sexual assault treatment center, the nurse believed me. She didn't judge me, and I was able to talk about what had happened. 
The first thing she said was, it's not your fault. You may think it is. People may tell you it is, but it's not. That really reassured me.